Warning, the following is intended for mature audiences 18 years old and above only. If you are under the age of 18, please exit the video now. This video may include terms of sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone. I'm Alicia Hunt, AKA Mama Fifi, the proud founder of Sex Coach, Sex Coaching and Sex Education Services, LLC. And I am so excited today to bring to you unpacking what is oming. And so I have uh, two special guests here. We have Kapel Gupta and Divine China. Um, first, let me tell you a little bit about me. I am the sex coach that loves to help people at, into deeper connection. If you're that woman who is wondering inside your heart and your body and you feel like, I know it's something better for me out there, I am your sex coach to help you live in your desire 100%. So I hope you come in today, whether you're live or whether you see this later on the tape and visit us sometimes on my website, www.the6excoach.life. And I also want to put a little disclaimer out there that this topic is for the adult audience. So, you know, we don't want no little kiddies be talking about, oh, mom, guess what I heard <laughs> on Facebook. So watch it with your parents if you want to watch this and get some educational information, some good educational information about what is only what it is, what it ain't right here from Six Coach Live. And with that being said, now I'm going to turn it over to Kapel Gupta so he can tell us a little bit about himself. Thanks, Alicia, and uh, nice to meet you, Divine. Yeah, so I am a master coach in the practice of orgasmic meditation, short uh, oming, and uh, I have been practicing since 2012. Um, and I'm also the founder of a company called Nibana.life, that's N-I-B-A-N-A dot life. Um, and as part of that, really, I do a couple of things. One is um, coach people in emotional intelligence and also work on uh, conscious relating, including sexuality and orgasmic meditation practice. Um, so that's what I do. Um, I work, my, my background is, so I was a, a kind of a heady dude uh, from corporate world for 15 years, um, had a marriage that ended up in divorce. So I was in a crossroads in my life and uh, um, I didn't really have um, sort of any awareness of my body um, until I started the practice of orgasmic meditation. And uh, really the practice completely transformed my life um, in terms of me becoming aware of, um, you know, the somatic experience, my body and what it meant for my connections, intimacy and sexuality. Um, and uh, to the point that I, I moved away from my corporate career in 2013 and uh, became a coach. Um, and uh, we since then have been, one of the things that I've been teaching is orgasmic meditation with people. Awesome, wonderful. And did you say where you were located? Oh yeah, I'm in London, United Kingdom. London, United yeah. Kingdom. Thank you for joining us. So I'm gonna make a yeah. quick shift so Miss Divine China can introduce herself. Who we got here? Tell folks who you are. Hello everyone, I am Divine China. I am a spiritual guide, intuitive guide. Um, I started sacred sexuality and practicing Tantra and orgasmic meditation back in 2021, at the beginning of 2021. Oming was introduced to me by um, someone who was dear to me that I met through someone. And it was a really great experience to to, to have, to practice. So with a type of person I am, with being in tune with myself, I always like different healing modalities to go into deeper connections with myself. Um, I'm a very emotional 
intellectual communicator. And um, I just like deeper experiences and, and practices that would allow me to have that with myself. So that's who I am. Awesome. And if you guys wondering, well, Mama Fifi, do you know about Omi? Yes, I was introduced to Omi back in uh, 2015, 2016. I took the six month course. Uh, due to health reasons, I was not able to finish the course to become certified to teach it, but I am in touch with some people who are certified to teach it. So if you're interested, hopefully we can get some of that information to you um, to contact some folks so that you can do your own due diligence to learn about it. And yes, I did. Um, I think I did about mm, 20 or 30 ohms I got up to and then I decided that you know for myself I really wanted to incorporate it in my life with my partner like having a relationship so I didn't uh, just freelance on the omen anymore but it is a wonderful practice and you will find that out today I'm so excited so we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna pop back to um, Mr. Gupta so um, so when did you start your coaching? And you did say a little bit about you still do coach. What does that process uh, entail? So I started coaching in 2013. Um, mm -hmm. And at the time it was uh, predominantly um, teaching in a classroom environment and also um, um, home training uh, people as well. Um, and it's since then, you know, now since 2019, I, I've moved on to create a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, business, which is I work with people uh, on all sorts of things, really. Anyone who's had a corporate career and they feel stuck in life or they're going through relationship um, issues and or want to create just an amazing, abundant life and relationship. So I work with mm -hmm. those people and I work with couples. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of owning... Most of the work that I do is um, via Zoom, so online. Um, and usually I work, personally, I work with people who want to create a practice and they want to see a significant change in their life, in their sex life, in their intimacy, in their connection. And for that, what I've found is that you learn a new practice and you've got to really take it into your life. And with owning, there's a really rich philosophy that surrounds owning. Um, so if you take it on and really work with it for three months, six month period, it can completely change your life, not just sexuality, but also your relationships and intimacy. And not just in your romantic relationships, but the way it works is your relationship with yourself and yes. also your relationship with pretty much everyone around you completely. It has the potential to completely change that. Um, so I work with people who are looking to have that kind of impact in their life. So rather than just like training them in the practice, I feel if, if someone's really looking to work with me for a three month or six month period uh, so that they can have that deep impact in their life. Awesome. So can you go ahead and uh, describe to audience that may not know what OMIN is, what is it exactly? <laughs> right. So OMING, short for orgasmic meditation, is a partnered sexuality and mindfulness practice. And the idea is that um, between two partners, one person uh, who has clitoris <laughs> could be, you know, whatever gender you associate yourself with, they, they lie down on a nest, which is, um, you know, made up of cushions, a blanket, and uh, they undress from waist down. And uh, they lie down on the nest, and um, a man or a woman or anyone of any gender fully clothed sit right next to them. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a set of rules that you follow. But the practice is really about a clitoral stroking practice. So uh, the person who's lying down on the nest, they are called the strokey, and the mm -hmm. person who's sitting, um, they're called the stroker. And the stroker strokes a particular spot. Uh, which is called the left-hand quadrant, the one o'clock spot, on the clitoris for 15 minutes, 
with literally as much pressure as if you would stroke your eyelid. And in, the, in a up, down, up, down motion, you stroke for 15 minutes. Um, and, you know, you, the practice is designed in such a way that um, you, can, you can bring it into your daily life without too much hassle. Um, yeah. And uh, it, has a, it has like certain steps to it, how you communicate within that, that's also very well defined. And um, it, it really kind of like changes your relationship um, with yourself, how you feel, because there's no goal, it's a goals practice. The only really thing that you're doing in that practice is to feel, and that's about it. And that's the thing, it's no goal, it's not goal oriented, you're not trying to reach a goal, you're not trying to, as the stroke E, not trying to have some sort of goal to reach a climax or anything of that point, because it is definitely a meditation right and what what would you tell a strokey like what what is the focus uh how do they get centered to receive the stroker right so the focus both for strokers and strokey is the point mm -hmm. of contact the point so of contact. uh the finger and the clip that's the focus and um the idea is that the stroke key is directing the stroker to the most sensitive spot. Mm -hmm. And this, so, so you're really just stroking to find where the sensation is mm -hmm. and you're feeling it in your body. And what it does is that you start to um, feel into the feeling state of another human being. Oh, so is that what does? the stroker experience as the stroker and the strokey as well began to feel like on a deeper right. level. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's part of the practice is to get you out of your head oh, and get okay. into your body. Into your body. And when you're in your body, it's like, you know, on one hand, it feels like you're just using the tip of the finger. So, you know, what's the big deal? However, um, it, for me anyway, the experience is as if I'm putting my finger in a power socket. Like there's that electricity. You start to feel the subtle sensation and the energy exchange that is happening. So you start to feel what's happening. So you, 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 you're developing empathy um, in that way. You know, one of the things that uh, Daniel Goldman, who's the, um, the writer who, who created this term emotional intelligence he talks about empathy and one of the things he talks about is that the main, the two places where you learn empathy is one when you are um, when you're born and your you know kids relationship with their with the mother is where they they attune their body to empathy and then the other place as adults where we can learn to attune is in sexuality and oming is a great way to attune, to feel into feeling states of each other, both for strokey and the stroker, um, to really learn what empathy is, because you can feel what's happening for your partner in your body. And that is the most amazing thing. Awesome. You know, it sounds like it's really something that would be great during this pandemic, like to really feel, because it seems like with the pandemic is forcing us not to connect and we need to connect. And in connection, we grow, right? We grow as human beings. I think this would be a great, if safe, right? Because there is safety to it, right? The, the stroker. Safety. Uh-huh. Yeah, safety is built into it. So part of the OMI process is what we, when I say rules, there is what we call a container. Uh, mm -hmm. And by container, what we mean is that every step is set up in such a way that um, what we say the vigilance center, which is the part of our brain that is continuously looking for safety, calms down. So the steps are created in such a way that uh, strokey's vigilance center can calm down so that you can let go. And the safety is also created in such a way that it's 15 minutes. So within those 15 minutes, you can really let go and go into your involuntary. And you know that after 15 minutes, this experience will end. 
So it's not, you know, one of the things that people don't find um, safety in is if you go into an experience and you don't know when it's going to end, Why? it's really hard to let go. Uh, so Oming is created in such a way that um, no matter how, you know, first of all, both stroker and strokey take responsibility for their own safety. You know, you're, you're taking responsibility. And at the same time, you go in with the idea that you are over a period of time getting more and more at ease with your involuntary mm-hmm. um, so that you can experience that real feminine energy um, and, and and learn to be more conscious inside of that feminine energy. Wow. Awesome. So if a person wanted to incorporate uh, oming into their life, what is important about the container and the nest to understand like not, you know, you just said there are rules and like, uh, I know it's not a sexual thing. It's not about sex. And if that comes into play, then people are doing it wrong. Can you explain why the container and nest is so important? Yeah, so the practice is designed um, to um, cultivate attention and cultivate connection. However, it is also designed as a way to keep it um, keep it away from sex itself or using it as a, um, uh, you know, a, a a precursor to sex. So that is not what is designed. It's designed almost as a, a meditative practice uh, in such a way that as, as if you do your meditation, as if you go to yoga, it is designed, the container and the nest is designed in such a way that you add this 15 minute practice. And then when the practice ends, you close your nest, you put it away, and then both people can go their own way. And then, you know, if you want to have sex, it's like you're cultivating energy. You're cultivating energy in your body. Now it's mm-hmm. about how you, you want to, how do you want to spend your energy? Now, if you want to mm-hmm. spend your energy while having sex, we say give it 10, 15 minutes. And if you still want to do that, then go ahead and have sex. However, when you're learning to channel this sexual energy, you can also utilize that energy in your work, in your creative projects, anywhere else in your life. So it's really a way to learn how to channel that 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 energy that you're cultivating through only. Couldn't that energy also be utilized as a healer? Like you want to heal something in your body or something uh, you might have experienced. Could it could that energy focus that deep on healing? My experience is yes. Um, like and there are I know that Institute of Ohm, they are working on scientific research and studies um, around this, around trauma, around lots of other things. Um, My experience of it is that the way um, the philosophy and the container is defined, it very much acts on the conditioning that man and women and any other gender, like masculine and feminine conditioning that we grow up with, right? Like the women, as in girls, are told usually, and this is a generalization, but most of the women have this like association with pink and boys have association with blue. And whatever that conditioning that we get. So, for instance, most men uh, grow up, same was true for me, that uh, knowing or thinking that our emotions or feelings are to be suppressed. If, we, mm-hmm. if I yeah. show my sensitivity, then somehow I am not a good enough man. Um, and what happens in that conditioning as a man is that I start to shut down and be numb. And when that happens, then when you are connecting in, in, in romantic relationships or intimate relationships or any human connection, I can't feel people because my heart is shut um, so over a period of time, that's what happens with a lot of men. And women have the other side of it, which is that they have to protect their sexual energy. You know, so the women's power is defined in protecting that sexual energy while men are hiding their sensitivity or feelings. So one of the things that happens in this practice is that you get to explore that part of part of you. And then itself is it's amazingly healing thing to do. 
Um, and there's so many more things, you know, like part of relationship, um, you know, so many people who come to this practice um, saying that their sex is completely dead in relationship. And through this practice, you can slowly start to cultivate that connection and intimacy and build an amazing sex practice if you want to. Um, awesome. So, you know, there's so much healing in that in that regard. Awesome. Well, I'm going to shift now and let Miss Divine China tell us about her experience, the pros of her experience with the uh, only. So yeah. You know. mm -hmm. So my very first time owning um it was a very very beautiful experience when i set intentions and gained trust from my partner who introduced it to me it was healing like i felt the release um i felt trauma that was embedded deep inside maybe my womb release while I was under the meditation. I've been practicing oming since, I want to say March of 2021. And it was, wasn't often because it was just another part of my healing modality, but oming really allowed me to tap deep into myself. And you are able to also tap in with the person that is who is the stroker. So with gaining trust over the last 18 months, you know, I want to talk about an experience that I had with Omi. I've only had one Omi partner who had introduced me um, to the practice in which I did do my own research on OMI. Um, he, he showed me exactly, the, I mean, everything, the container, how, how you're supposed to lay the nest, how, how a woman lays down, everything. We talked about it, communicated, very, very communicative in the process. However, when you say, like, I, I did, truly have safety lined up. I never led him on to make him believe that it was any more other than owning because communication is truly, truly important. So over the last year, we will own and it would be strictly a meditation. Like you say, going to yoga, doing a meditation, healing, talking about it, integrating what with the experience. And um, I, I was also speaking very highly of this individual because I was really healing from that practice. However, there are some people I believe that may get into the practice for their own gratification as well. And these are the things that we have to watch out for. You could uh, be groomed and that's what happened to me. I was groomed to trust. And because I understand as a container, when you say you let go in this container, in which I truly do whenever I am in under a meditation, I truly surrender. So in this last particular experience, um, the container was the the container was set. However, this particular time, they proceeded to do what they wanted to do while I was under. So, like you say, you want to make sure that sex is separate. You want to make sure that the ten to fifteen minute time frame that that you say, like, okay, if you want to explore other options, close the container, have a conversation. In other words, this particular time, we did not close the container. He proceeded to get taken over by my experience. And- um, What do you say about that, Mr. Gooper, if somebody do that, to 
what do the strokey do in that situation? Well, first of all, I think um, I want to say I'm sorry that you had that experience. Um, the the container is designed in such a way that both strokers and strokeys have, um, like as I said, you you go into this practice for yourself, and as part of the practice, um, the communication is set in a way that you can direct the stroker uh, to, like ask them for the adjustments within the practice. And if um, if the things, if the oming or anything is happening that is beyond the container, that you can stop the practice as well. Like knowing your yes and no at any point in the practice, go, and you know, one of the things we say that like going into this practice as uh, a a physical, spiritual, psychological adult, you know, like the the container is designed in such a way that um, if you follow that container, those things will arise. And, you know, sexuality is also like sexual energy is a quite potent energy, you know. And uh, so with that, I would say that in, in a situation like that, just saying to the stroker, like, that is not acceptable or even if that means that you're um, stopping the own there and uh, you know depending on what kind of relationship you have with them to actually address that mm -hmm. um, to address that uh, very specifically and very clearly as to yes. what happened there before you um, before you progress Thank you. Before you answer uh, Divine China, like what you actually did, I want to know, I want to make sure the record is clear that um, you're talking about a specific person. You're not talking against only you love the practice. It's just this experience, this one time out of the whole year, this happened. And you're just saying that the practice is very good. It's just that you had an experience. Is that correct? That is correct. The practice is very good. It just so happened. I had an experience. And like you say, you have to be clear and direct. And that's exactly what I was. I did immediately stop. I got up, went to the restroom. I came out. And then I had to integrate what happened. I eventually had a conversation with them and was very clear and direct of you know, you're normally more disciplined than this. Have you ever done this to anyone else? You know, um, just truly, I said, I never led you on. We always communicate. We always ha have open communication. Um, we always open the container, close the container. Why, 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 what happened this time? You know, so it was a very, very uncomfortable conversation to have. But I was clear and direct because I am, for one, that's a, this is a practice of self-love. And because I love myself, I had to pull out my other tools and truly open up my throat chakra. Because like you say, it allows you to speak your mind, speak who you are, tell it what it is, say how it is, say how you feel. And in that particular instance, I was so empowered to say exactly what he did to me, how I felt, and that it was unacceptable and chose no longer to continue the relationship. So that sexual energy, it was utilized to stand your ground and yes. and be able to express yourself full out, like, no, this is unacceptable <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> Absolutely, you know? Well, that's good, I mean, I think that's the thing with the feminine, with the divine feminine. We do have a voice. And so often, because before the age of 18, most women are traumatized or have some sexual assault done to them, that we lose our voice chakra, right? Our throat chakra. And we, it hinder us from really speaking our mind. And to be able to go into a meditation like only orgasmic meditation, 
to gain your empowerment as a feminine, right? We both, both the stroker and strokey have that feminine energy in us and we learn from it and uh, it can send us to, you know, different places in our lives that will open us up more to experience life as we desire it to be, you know, like uh, Mr. Gupta said, he said, you know, in your work, your everyday life for yourself, it's like, it just empower, it gets you to recognize how you're feeling in the world, your, your position in the world, your place in your space, how you're moving and interacting. And um, that's a beautiful thing that even though you may experience something because we're, we, we, we're human, we have human nature. Some of us just flop, <laughs> you know, lose our minds like, oops, I lost my mind for a second. <laughs> you know, by being empowered, you can help somebody get back on track, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that, you know, you had that conversation. I'm glad that you are continuing in your healing and spreading the word and everything of that nature. And I hope that, um, you know, you could find someone worthy of continuing your practice Absolutely. as you go on. Yes. You know, I want to say as, as a woman laying down and entrusting, right, it, it's that whole going back into your little girl moment. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like you want to make sure that you're pampered and taken care of and heard and listened to. So that's just what you experience whenever you are in any intimate experience. It, it, it brings you back to that little girl. So I'm here to heal the little girl in myself as well as others by sharing this experience and just letting them know that it's okay and that you can heal and you can move forward and speak your mind. Is there anything you want to say, Capel, to that? I think a couple of things, uh, just generally for the audience, uh, really, yes. whoever's listening. One is that if you are someone new listening to this, um, one thing I would recommend is to learn from a, um, uh, a certified coach. Um, mm -hmm that's always something that we recommend because as an individual you really want to understand the practice and the the container and everything that surrounds the practice so that you can take full responsibility in that way because the other thing i want to say the, the nuances of it i think it's not just the container even how we ask for you know mm -hmm. very set process for that and there's a set philosophy behind it and one of the things that uh, is, is taught is ask for what you want. So if you, if you know, coming in uh, to this practice as adults, if you are looking to go out on a date, don't use oming as a way to ask mm -hmm. someone out on a date. If yes. you actually want to have sex, then have the courage and clarity to ask for sex. Do not use oming as a way to sort of squeeze in, uh, you know, sideways. So, and, and, and for anyone of the stroker or strokey to really get those um, nuances, I think it's important that um, they complete their training with a certified instructor. Um, the second thing I would say is that I think, like for me, and this is, sort of interesting when I was, uh, when I started my practice, one of the things that happened was for me, I was, um, you know, my father passed away 20 years ago and for 10 years, I wasn't able to mourn, uh, his mm -hmm. passing and, uh, really interestingly through Oming, because I started to open up, I started to let my guard down. A lot of that mourning happened through this practice. So, uh, you know, those things, those experiences can happen. However, if we go into this practice knowing 
that we are entering this practice as adult, as taking full responsibility for our experience. It is really important so that anything that comes up during the practice, we can then go back to ourselves and own that experience. Um, so I think those are a couple of things that I would, uh, I would just add to, I think what Divine's probably handled it really well anyway, you know, your experience. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it just sounds like we're just talking about how this practice empowers you and it can take you back to your past and mm -hmm. bring up experiences that you never confronted and allow you to confront it in a vulnerable, safe way for your own personal healing, you know, not to have grieved and then become uh, in touch with your feelings and your emotions, I can only imagine how profound that was, how you felt it in your body, how you were experiencing it and was able to go on and, you know, have your grieving process and um, get to the other side. Yes. Absolutely. It was kind of sad and funny at the same time. You know, it's like, you're. this is supposedly, a pro I mean, it is a sexuality and mindfulness practice, right? You're stroking a clitoris, so it is a sexuality practice, and you are inside of a sexual energy field. Yes. yes. And, and then to say that, oh, actually, I went through a phase where I would cry in every every yes. time I would own. And yeah. when I look back, it's, it's funny in, in, in a way, right? Like, um, you would never expect anything like that. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I cried during Omi, so I I totally and it, it was just a release. It's a release that you that you need. It's just trauma that's just lodged inside of you that just needs to come out. And it does. Yes. <laughs> I so. had experience where I've seen colors. I'm, one time, just some like some aces, some like ancestral mm. like. African American people, like uh, or African people, really uh, was like their faces was just popping up and going across like like a scroll, just scrolling across. And I was like, "Who are these people? Why am I seeing these people? I've never seen them before." And they were just going across, going across as if they were saying, "You know, I'm kin to them," like letting me know I'm your ancestor. And it was women, it was men, it was they all shapes and sizes, you know, features, you know, and I'm just like, wow, where are these people coming from? How am I picking up on this history? You know, it was just so phenomenal and mind blowing. And uh, I, I was, that was very powerful. I was like, whoa. You was tapping <laughs> yourself. It's, 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 it's a spiritual experience. Sexual, yeah. sexuality yeah. is spirituality, really. It, it so, is. I mean, so you tapping in so deep into yourself, going so deep. That's it. Could have been it. Could have been me and my. It could have been me and my former lives. I don't know. I didn't get the answer that far, but I saw it. And I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" You know. Yes. yes. That's <laughs> you know, right there. And that's why mm -hmm. I, I want you to talk about the end process of owning uh, Capel, like. What is that part for the frame? The framing. The end of process? The framing. Yes. So, just for the audience, so the uh, what framing is or exchanging frames is uh, part of the um, oming process. Where, when we finish the practice before we close the nest, both the stroker and the strokey. Um, we share one moment during the practice where we felt something in our body. And we describe it uh, not in um, the feelings or emotions, but we describe it in the language of sensations. Um, and the idea there is that, you know, our language is very rich in feelings and emotions, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily pay attention to um, what that means in the, in, in, at the sensation level in our body. So the way the framing is designed is so that you can connect what's happening in your body with your brain. So you can yeah. connect, like, you can connect. 
Oh. I get exactly what you're talking about because you ask somebody how you feel, they'll go straight to their head with a response. You're like, no, you're not telling me how you feel. Yeah. Like, literally, what are you feeling? So keep going. Explain that. It's so funny. Right. You know, it's like, uh, let's say, you know, I'm angry. Now, angry is my brain's interpretation of uh, maybe my chest is, um, you know, I have a fiery feeling in my chest, you know, sensation wise, I'm feeling hot, my chest is expansive or constructive. Um, I might have like movement of energy or temperature in my in my body. Now that's actually what's happening at a sensation level. But as the intensity rises, b because of our experiences in life, we interpret that sensation in different ways. Yeah. Now, some people might find that as passion, other people might say it's anger, some other people might interpret as different ways. So what uh, framing does is it, it starts to give us this, um, bring consciousness and awareness to the sensations in our body so that we can describe uh, the, the extraordinary experiences that we are having. Because otherwise our vocabulary is really sort of uh, you know, very limited in that way. And we don't describe the actual sensation that we are feeling in our body. And right. the other part of it is that we allow, one of the amazing thing that happens in, in Omega and Frames is that the stroker and the strokey most of the time kind of know the moment that you're talking about. So for instance, if I say, oh, there was this halfway through the home, I felt this expansion in my chest and I had this, you know, uh, uh, a sharp feeling going from my chest to my stomach. Most of the time, I can guarantee that the partner will say, oh, I remember that moment. Mm. And this is how I felt in that moment as well. So you know that actually people are connected in that way. Yes. You know? And that is an amazing thing that frames, sharing frames does. Awesome. We are all connected and we can find ways to explore that connection. And being an Omer is a part of that deeper connection. And did you, you did give a, a, a a website or some information about how people can research. Can you say that again, please? Like where they're supposed yeah. to go? So the best place to go for uh, finding out anything about Oming is Institute of Ohm .com. Um, So, you know, the team, it's a team there. They, I think you can sign up to the newsletter or, or, or even like talk to people in the team there. Uh, the, 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 the container document, which is the the form and the rules, it is also um, available on the website. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn more, I think uh, the link to the book that Nicole Bedon wrote um, uh, called Slow Sex, um, mm -hmm. that is also another place to learn about the oming and, and some of the philosophy that we're talking about here. Uh, but Institute of Ohm .com is the is probably the best place to go. Awesome. Um, anything else you would like to say, um, Ms. Devine? Um, I would just like everyone just to be encouraged and still look up and try Oming. And it's not something that I will not do again. It's just, you know, I believe that it's a good thing. So I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> Is there a group or coaches list or where people can find coaches? Do you know? I think if, if, if people go to Institute of Home and, um, and uh, put in their query based on where, which part of the world they're coming from, I think right. they probably the best people to direct uh, people to the right coaches. Um, uh, and I think all of the resources, there's probably uh, lots of video testimonials and other stories of people practicing and their experiences through Oming. So people can actually 
read and watch um, a variety of experiences so that they can connect to it more as well. So that would be the best place to go. Okay, yeah, and I know it's a lot of things on YouTube as well, but get it from the horse's mouth. Go to the Institute of OM.com and do your due diligence if this sound like this is something that you want to experience and explore. Find your own coach so that you can go through the process uh, in an effective way and really learn what you need to learn in terms of oming and know the container, know what the nest is, the container is, how to set it up, how to close it is very important to the process. Like we said before, we can never iterate this enough that it's not a gateway to sex. It is really literally a meditation to deeper connection to yourself, to understanding your self-worth, your value, who you are in your sexuality, and how you can live full out in your desire 24-7. So I don't see any comments from anyone. I was wondering, for those who are viewing, if you had any questions, you can type it in the chat. I should be able to see your questions. If you have any questions for Capel or Divine China, I will read your questions out. And if there's something wrong with my system and you do have questions and I can't see them at this time, I don't know why. But um, I would like to just take this moment as we uh, begin to end this session because um, I think we're all, I think we have really explored what owning is to the point where I think everybody uh, really, really understand what it is and what it ain't. So that was my whole uh, process of wanting to have this to make sure people understand what this good practice is all about. So if there is not anything else you guys want to say to the audience, and I have nothing else to say myself, we can go ahead and end here. And I want to thank you both. Thank you for coming in from London on to my show because I know it's like eight hours ahead and it's late there. And I want to really, really appreciate your time and no longer hold you up. And um, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And thank you, Divine. Thank and you, Divine and China. Thank you. Yes. You yeah. guys have a yeah. good evening. Thank you. You, you as too. well. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yes. So those were my guests. I want to thank the viewers for coming in and listening to Unpacking What is Oming Roundtable Number Four, What It Is, What It Ain't. And I just like to say that, hey, if you're that person looking for deeper connection, like you're wondering, I know of something better out there for me but I just don't understand. I can't get to it. I keep running into the same old thing. And you feel like you need to talk to somebody, contact Sex Coach. That's sexcoach.life. The number six, E-X, coach.life. Call, have a free consultation, 15-minute consultation conversation so that we can unpack what it is that you are experiencing. Go to my website, www.sixcoach.life, and look at the comprehensive, holistic approaches we have to your healing. You can get a card reading. You can get Reiki. You can get individual coaching, couples coaching, and you can take my program, Living in Desire 100%. So just check out my website and see if there's anything there that you would like, and I'll be glad to assist you. So for that, Mama Fifi out. Peace out. Thank you for joining me.